Pasadena, home to roses in the Arroyo, museums and mountains, science and spectacles, and ghosts. It's not too surprising, given the long history of souls who have come to live and spend their lives here, that a few places would be haunted. Take, for instance, the Cobb family. Charles Cobb was a lumber magnate and came to the area with his wife, Carrie, to make his fortunes. Upon retirement, the Cobbs built a large estate at the top of Lake Avenue in, Alta, in Loma Vista. Today, you can see the river rock entrance and what's left of the wrought iron gates at the start of the San Merrill Trail. Charles and Carrie Cobb loved their estate and vowed never to leave. But when Mr. Cobb died, the estate was abandoned and ended up changing hands several times. The Marx brothers purchased the property, but instead of taking care of it, they too let it go. The Cobbs were not happy. No one was taking care of their beloved home, so they tried desperately to do it from beyond the grave. Lights would come on, Voices would be heard. Strange movements and sounds were frequently reported from those nearby. Soon the neighbors wanted the place torn down altogether, and with that the Cobbs became more desperate and continued to show up in only the ways they could. But spirits have little influence, and while a proposal to turn the property into a graveyard never came to pass, the house was eventually torn down. It is now part of the National Park at the base of Echo Mountain. And when you hear the cries, the moans and groans from Echo Mountain, it is them mourning their beloved estate. Another ghost story takes place in Old Town Pasadena. Tucked in the northeast corner of Fair Oaks and Holly Street, there was once a pub called the Loch Ness Monster Pub. This was a local favorite made popular by Snotty Scotty and the Hankies who played there often. It was Snotty Scotty himself who started the Dewtop Parade. Now what's important about this pub was that before it was a watering hole, it was one of the first firehouses in Pasadena. At the time when there was a fire, they would ring a bell to alert the firemen. Ding, 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 ding. Now, one of the firemen, a J.D. Johns, fell in love with a local woman by the name of Emily Beaton. After successfully proposing to her, he came into the station and rang the bell in celebration of her saying yes to his hand in marriage. Ding, 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 ding. Time went by, and within just a few days of getting married, a large residential fire broke out. The firemen were called into action. Ding, 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 ding. They raced to the fire, and upon arriving, J.D. quickly realized it was the beaten home where his beloved fiance lived. In an act of desperation, he ran into the blazing home to save his love, but neither ever came out. It's been said at the old Loch Ness pub every now and again, customers would hear the bell of the fire station ring, ding, 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 and knew J.D. Jones was still hoping to marry his beloved Emily. The place is now the Old Town Pub, and I'm not sure if they've heard this story or the bell. Our final stop this evening is the Colorado Street Bridge. This remarkable and beautiful bridge had issues from the start. During construction, several workers were hurt and one even fell to his death and landed in wet cement at the base of the bridge. It is not certain if he was removed or left there as he died on impact. The bridge was officially opened on December 13th, 1913, and soon souls were drawn to their death. One story is told of a young mother who first threw her baby off the bridge before jumping herself. The baby landed in a tree and survived, but the mother did not. It was often reported that people heard the soft sound of a mother singing lullabies under the bridge, and yet no one was around. With over 100 deaths below the bridge, the spirits that swirl there are surely troubled. 
They seem to continually call others to join them, which is why it is known as Suicide Bridge. But I do not want to take this lightly. If you or anyone you know mentions suicide or wishes to die, please call the national hotline and get help. Now let us continue with Scream on Scream.